in this project, we're going to conduct financial statement analysis. So right here, you will see a spreadsheet covering the income statement and the balance sheet of a particular company. And if you read the instruction, you are going to use Excel formulas to replace the numbers in the sales wherever possible. So right here, you see all the numbers. These are all given solid numerical numbers, and uh, you are going to conduct some calculations to uh, work out some of the results. And uh, when I grade on your submission, I will grade on the formulas only. If you just uh, turn in the whole thing without any formulas, you would get a zero. So let me just be clear with that. But don't worry, I will work on each and every of the formulas with you. So um, if you want to do such uh, editing or replacing numbers with formulas, the related sales are in this uh, given spreadsheet. All right, you will see this financial statement is given to you. And also, you need to calculate the numbers, all of the numbers in this uh, common size financial statement. You see right here, you have a common size income statement where net sales served as the base and everything else is a percentage of net sales. And also, as you can see, the balance sheet uh, here, you have a total assets as the uh, base and everything else would be a percentage of the total assets. And you are also gonna learn how to create a statement of cash flows from a scratch. And also you're gonna calculate all of this uh, financial ratios. And uh, as I said right here, all of them, if you read the formula bar here, all of them are in the format of uh, numbers. And we are going to conduct uh, calculations and use the calculating formulas to replace all of this. All right, so let's start with some uh, easy ones. So for example, this uh, income statement right here, so let me just uh, zoom in a little bit, make it look bigger. And uh, so what you can see here is uh, net sales. There's nothing we can do to calculate that. And for cost of goods sold is uh, given, and we cannot calculate that with uh, with the help uh, without the help of any additional number. So we just uh, move along. And uh, right here you have a EBIT that's called uh, earnings before interest and taxes. And then that is the net sales subtracted by all the costs. So you have a uh, cost which sold. You also have a uh, uh, depreciation to uh, to be subtracted. All right. And then you can just drag this uh, 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 sale. Uh, you place your cursor, your mouse at the your mouse at the uh, right bottom corner, and then drag it all the way to the right by one column. So you will see that uh, on the surface, the results stay the same. You look at the same number here, $280 and 300 here. Um, it does not change. But if I double click on it, you will see a uh, Excel formulas has been plugged in there with the same numerical output. If I double click, then I will see the result. So that's exactly what I'm asking you guys to do. And for the next one, if you move down, you will see interest. We cannot calculate that unless we have the interest rate and uh, the amount of a debt, but we don't. So we just move along to calculate earning before taxes, which is a EBIT minus interest. All right, so we just do this calculation nice and easy. Well, I highly recommend you to have a cursor or a mouse like this. If you use your fingers on the touchpad, that's going to be very difficult for you because such operations require high sensitivity of uh, operation. All right, so back to this income statement. If you look at uh, taxes, so taxes could be calculated. Right here, you have a tax rate given to you. That's a 25%. And the EBT is also called a taxable income which is the, uh, so if you want to calculate the uh, taxes, you're going to use uh, the tax rate multiplied by this uh, uh, tax rate. And then I hit uh, enter to get this uh, $48. Of course, that's going to be in millions for such a large company. And then if I drag it all the way to the right, I, I did before, 
you will see I have uh, a very bad result here because uh, when I drag it down, the when I drag it to the right, you will see the uh, EBT has been uh, shifted as it's supposed to to the earlier year, but I want the tax rate to stay the same. So if I drag it without any uh, fixing, then you will see I'm using this a blank cell here and Excel automatically recognizes it as zero. To solve that issue, I'm going to lock this uh, tax rate formula. So no matter where I drag it, this cell will always be used. So how do I conduct lock? I want you guys to hit the hotkey F4. Okay, you will see hotkey F4 on the top of your keyboard. And uh, uh, some of you have a very small keyboard. You may also find on the function and uh, you can hit function plus F4. It really depends on your computer setting. All right, so if I hit F4, you will see a dollar sign has been placed in front of a B and a dollar sign has been replaced in front of a 12. So if I just drag it from there, you will see that I got the right result, which means the tax rate is locked, but the taxable income has been shifted accordingly. All right. If you don't know how to use F4 hot key, you can just manually, manually tap in the dollar signs in front of the column letter and a row number. And now the next one is net income. That's pretty easy to calculate. You just use uh, earning before taxes minus taxes right here. And then that's your net income. To get total dividend, you will need to utilize the payout ratio. So the payout ratio basically means the percentage of net income being paid out as dividend to shareholders. And the rest of it, you see is right now the payment payout is the 50%. The rest that has not been paid out is the 50%. It's one minus 50%. The rest of it will go to retained earnings, just for your information. All right, how to calculate a total dividends? You just use net income multiplied by this payout ratio. And once again, I'm going to drag it all the way to the right to uh, cover the year earlier. So I'm going to lock this uh, B13, which is the payout ratio. All right, that's how I started. And then I drag it. You will see that uh, the uh, same payout ratio has been used for a different year. And I can also hit Control plus tilde. Okay, this tilde is the key uh, to the left of a key number one. So if I hit Control plus tilde, this is a formula view I would see. And if I grade your submissions, I will definitely check the formula views to see if you have put all the right formulas with uh, the correct reference cells in the um, in the edited cells. And hit Control TLD again. Move back to the numerical uh, outlook. All right, you are also given market price per share and also shares outstanding in millions. And we're not gonna worry about it right now. We're gonna wait until the calculation of financial ratios at last. All right, so right here you have uh, the balance sheet. Let's work on the balance sheet. You will see that. Uh, the cash and equivalents is on the top of it. You also see accounts receivable inventories, and then you observe total current assets. And clearly, this is a summation of all the items above. So current means uh, short term. So these are short term assets. And I'm going to drag it the result of 2022 to the year of 2021. You will see the same calculation has been duplicated. And for planned equipment, there's nothing much I could do. But for accumulated depreciation, I can use uh, the accumulated depreciation from the past, which is in the previous year, plus the new contribution this year. So where do I get the, uh, the new contribution? It's easy. I just look at this uh, income statement and I look for depreciation right here. So the accumulated depreciation of this year equals to the accumulated depreciation last year plus depreciation of this year. All right, so now I have a planned equipment, which is a positive assets, and the accumulated depreciation, which is a negative assets, 
the more accumulated depreciation you have, the less total value of your fixed assets. And uh, if I combine these two, positive and negative, I would have uh, net fixed assets. Then drag it. And for the total assets, it's uh, total current assets plus the net fixed assets, which is a number here, and then drag it. All right, so that's the one side of the balance sheet. And if you look at the other side, you will first need to calculate the total current liabilities, which is the summation of accounts payable, accruals, and notes payable. All right, and then after I finish one year, I just drag it to the next year to replicate the calculation. And then I have a long-term balance, which is the only long-term liabilities. So the next job here is to get the total liabilities. So I'm going to use the total current liabilities, which is short-term, less than a year, plus long-term bonds, the only long-term liabilities. Then I drag it all the way to the right. All right, you will see the formulas has been plotted behind the numbers. And for common stock, I don't have information for that. But for retained earnings, this is a very big, big issue. And I want you guys to know how to do it without the help of a formula sheet. So you should know the definition of retained earnings is uh, the retained earnings of last year plus the income you made this year minus the dividend you pay out this year, all right? So it's a 750 plus 144 minus 72. So it's just like a company saving account, how much balance it has this year equals to how much the company has saved the last year plus the money the company makes this year minus the expenses, which is dividend paid out this year. And when I hit enter, so that's my result. And I can only calculate return earnings for the most current year. I cannot calculate it in the year before because to calculate the return earnings in 2021, I would need return earnings in 2020, which I don't. So I can't do anything about this number. And for total equity, it is the, the summation, common stock, and retained earnings. All right. Then I drag it nice and easy. And for total liabilities and equity, that's the total liabilities, of course, plus total common equity. You don't have a preferred equity, so total common equity is just total equity. All right, so do this nice and easy. So right now, I have finished the construction of the balance sheet and the income statement with the correct calculations. If I hit Control plus tilde, you will see this is my formula formula view, and uh, all the formulas are correctly inputted. Control tilde again, you move back to the numerical look. And uh, I need to mark this here. You see uh, cash and uh, equivalent. I will need to plug in the uh, formula later after I finish the statement cash flows, but for now, this is okay.